Hello everybody and welcome to the DirectX 11 engine tutorial series. In this series we will cover making a basic DirectX 11 engine. For this series we are going to be using Visual Studio 2017. I think it should be noted that these are not C++ tutorials specifically. I will not be teaching you how to program in C++. These are DirectX 11 tutorials, so if you already know C++, and you have a, a decent grasp on 3D math, I'm not sure if I'll cover that or how I'll go through it, then these are the tutorials for you. It also helps if you have experience using the Windows API. I'm going to have every single tutorial on a GitHub repository, and I'll have different branches for each tutorial. So if you decide that you just want to follow along and then uh, pull from the branch or download, you know, from the repo, that's perfectly fine. This first tutorial will just be setting up our first solution and also uh, implementing the DirectX toolkit. So first, let's go to File, New, Project. And we're going to select Windows Desktop Wizard so that we can start with a blank project. We're going to call this our DirectX 11 engine and we are using Visual Studio 2017, so I will put VS 2017. Hit OK. We're going to change the application type to a Windows application. And we're going to make it an empty project and remove the SDL checks. Press OK. Alright, next let's go to our Solution Explorer and create a source file. This is what an entry point looks like on the Windows application. The first argument is a handle to the instance of this application. The second argument is a handle to the previous instance, which we will not be using this. Uh, we have our pointer to our command line, and then this is a it's called the command show argument. When we call, we will call something called a show window on our window after we create it. And it's suggested by Microsoft that on the first window, you call this on for the second argument that we pass in this command show value. Now, uh, when I've tested it, I've also just passed it in uh, this SW show value. And it shows the window just fine, so I'm not exactly sure what the reason is for that, but if you're really interested, you can look it up. So as far as setting up this project, we need to add the DirectX toolkit. Now before we add it, let's go over why we need to add it. Uh, when the Windows 8 SDK was released, they updated the uh, software development kit and included the DirectX 11 software development kit with Windows 8. The old DirectX 11 software development kit came with the June 2010 release, and a lot of the functions have been deprecated since then. Because of this, the SDK lost a lot of functionality, so now we need to get that same functionality from the DirectX 11 toolkit. So let's go ahead and Google DirectX SDK. You should see the GitHub. We are going to download this. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and extract it. I'm using WinRAR to extract it. Okay, and once it is extracted, we're going to open up this path, and you will see that we have all of these different solutions. In this example, I'm using Visual Studio 2017, and I'm on Windows 7, so I'm going to be using this solution. If, for example, we were using Windows 10 in 2017, we would use this solution. And if for some reason you were still on 2015, you could use the 2015 solution up here for Windows 10 and the 2015 solution up here for not Windows 10. So it should be pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to go ahead and open the appropriate solution for what I'm working with.
Okay, so once our solution is open, there's a few things we have to do. We want to build the debug and release libraries for 32-bit and 64-bit. So we will select debug, we will go to Win32, we will hit build, and we will build this solution. Now we need to do the same thing for release. So select release, hit build, and build the solution. Next, we need to repeat this process for 64-bit. So we will select 64, go to debug, and build the solution. And now we will select release, and build the last solution. Alright, and that's all that we have to do right here. So let's exit out of that solution, and go back to this directory. Now you'll see two things. We have an INC folder, and we have a bin folder. The INC folder contains all of the includes we will need for the DirectX toolkit. The bin folder contains all of the libraries that we just compiled. So first, let's work on getting those includes. I'm going to copy this folder, and we want to open up the directory to our new solution that we had just made. Okay, you see I've opened up that directory. There is our source CPP file. And I am going to create a new folder. Actually, I will paste, I will copy and paste this INC folder. And I'm going to rename it to includes. And this just has all of those direct XTK includes inside of it. Next, I will create a libs folder. And this will contain the libraries. So inside of the library folder, let's create an x64 folder. And this will be the 64-bit libraries. And let's also create an x86 folder, which will contain the 32-bit libraries. Let's open up the x86, and we are going to create a debug folder for the debug library, and also a release folder. And we are going to go back and do the same thing for 64-bit. Now, if we go back to our direct XTK folder, you will see the bin folder. Let's open that. And first, we're going to set up everything for 32-bit. So we will select our x86 folder and go to debug. In our bin folder, we will select our folder that we generated, which it might have a different name if you generated it for a different uh, Visual Studio or Windows 10. We're going to select Win32, debug, and copy the direct xtk.live file. I'm going to paste it here. Now let's go back. Let's do the same thing for release. So go to release, copy that live file, go to our release folder, and paste it. Lastly, we just have to do the same thing for 64-bit. Going to paste the debug from 64, go to release, copy that, Go back, go to our release folder, and paste that. So that was boring, but now we need to link these uh, additional library directories and the new include directory to our solution. Let's go back to our Visual Studio solution and go to Project and choose Properties. We want to go down to the VC++ Directories tab. And actually, go ahead and change the configuration to all, change the platform to all, and it'll, you'll see we will get a, an error. Anytime you change the platform, you have to reopen the properties. So now we have all and all selected, and this will just save us some steps. So for the include directories, let's go ahead and hit edit. We're going to add a directory. We're going to choose that includes folder. Now, this is one way you could do it. But there's another way I prefer to do it, and the reason is because with this way, if we ever move the folder, then this path will become invalid and we'll have to update it. 
What we can do to avoid that is we can replace the solution directory with a macro that references the solution directory. To do this, we will put a dollar sign and put solution dir in parentheses. And if you see at the bottom, this has our evaluated value and the evaluated value is the same as what we had before. So this macro will work. Let's press OK and press apply. Now, no matter where we move the folder, that path will still be valid. Let's press OK again. Reopen our properties, and now we have to set up the library directories for 64 and 32-bit and for debug and release. So this is going to be a few steps. It is pretty boring, but it has to be done. First, let's go to 32-bit. We are going to select debug. Go to add a library directory. Go into libs, x86 for 32-bit, and debug. Select folder. And we need to replace this starting part with solution dir. Press OK. Apply. Now let's go to release. Do the same thing for the release folder. x86, release, select folder. Replace the path with solution dir instead of the actual solution directory. OK, apply. Now let's do the same thing for 64-bit. Reopen the properties page. Go to debug. Select that folder. Replace the directory. Press OK. Apply. And one more just for release. Libs x64 release. Let's press OK, apply, and OK. So now we have successfully added our include and our library directories to this project for DirectX DK. Let's go ahead and link to those libraries through the code. We could do this in the project properties. You could go to the linker input and type in the libraries right here for additional dependencies. But for now, I'm just going to do it in the code. To link to direct the DirectX 11 library, we are going to link to the d3d11.lib file. And this should just be in the Windows 8 SDK, so you don't have to worry about adding that directory or anything. And to link to the DirectX Toolkit library, we will just link to the file that we copied in all those different folders. So now let's make sure that our program runs. Just for completeness sake, I'm going to test it in everything. So it looks like for release, I messed that up. So let me go ahead and fix that. Oh, I guess for release I didn't didn't link to it. I thought I did. Not sure what I did there. Okay, that runs and then I'll go to 64 bit debug. Make sure that runs. It does, and then let's go to release, make sure that runs. Okay, so now our project is properly set up to use DirectX 11 and the DirectX Toolkit. I realize this tutorial was pretty boring, and it didn't seem like we covered much, but this setup is very vital, uh, just so we don't have to do it later. I don't want people to 
come in late into the series and wonder why they can't use certain functions that are from the DirectX toolkit. In the next tutorial, we will probably cover making a basic window, and then we will get into message processing before we actually get into DirectX. So that is all that we are going to cover for now. Thanks for watching, and if you have any constructive criticism or comments, feel free to leave a comment.